Hi guys, Ms. Francis here, and I'd like to continue our discussion of diffusion osmosis and its applications within the real world. So changes in water potential can explain why water travels up a tree. Remember we said that water potential or water moves from a high water potential to a low water potential? Well, when I'm saying low water potential, what I mean is a bigger negative number. So do you see how these numbers are getting more and more negative? Movement of water within a tree will move from the roots to the stems to the leaves and then out to the atmosphere by transpiration because as I'm moving up a tree the water potential is getting more and more negative. Dialysis is another real-life application of osmosis. When a person's kidney isn't functioning correctly, dialysis is used to help that person filter out the toxins within their blood or the extra um, solutes that that person doesn't need because for some reason, whatever reason, their kidneys aren't functioning correctly. So the dialysis machine uses osmosis in order to clean the blood. It sets up a semi-permeable membrane where it selects or um, separates out different solutes and then returns to the body the blood with the solutes that the body needs. So not only is osmotic control important for animals like humans, but it's also very important for um, plants. And let me explain why. So cell survival depends on this balancing act where you want to um, have an animal cell remain in an isotonic environment where water is flowing at the same rate in both directions so that the volume of the cell is stable. Otherwise, what could potentially happen if an animal cell is in a hypertonic situation, the cell is going to shrivel. It's going to crenate. However, in a hypotonic solution, the cell can burst, known as um, lysing. So for a cell living in an isotonic environment, osmosis isn't a problem. Similarly, the cells of most land animals are bathed in extracellular fluid that's isotonic to the cell, so you don't have water leaving or um, the cells gaining water at a rate that is too extreme. However, organisms without rigid walls do have osmotic problems if they're put in either a hypertonic or hypotonic environment, so those organisms must do osmoregulation to maintain their internal environment. So let me give you an example. Um, fish use their gills to do osmoregulation, whether it's a freshwater fish or a saltwater fish. Furthermore, animals like humans, for example, use their kidneys to do osmoregulation. Plants are a different story. Plants in a hypotonic solution are going to swell until the elastic wall meets up with the cell wall. At this point, the cell wall is able to um, maintain that pressure and the cell is known as turgid. It's in a healthy state is what we call it. On the other hand, if a cell is a plant cell that's um, exposed to something that's isotonic, it might become flaccid and wilt. And then lastly, a plant cell might undergo something called plasmolysis if placed in a hypertonic solution where the cell membrane will actually um, shrink because the plant cell is losing water. Here are some interesting application questions that further explain how osmosis is applied in our everyday lives. Questions one and two we've already tackled, so let's look at question three. What would happen to the cells of a freshwater fish if it was placed in the ocean? So if I have a freshwater fish that doesn't really have, um, isn't used to an environment that has lots of salt, what's going to potentially happen to the fish. And now on the other hand, what would happen to a shark, and I'm gonna draw a fin to represent the shark, if it was placed in a freshwater environment where it doesn't contain much solute like its original 
marine environment used to. So that was our discussion today about osmosis and how it applies within the context of your life within the real world. Tomorrow, we're going to switch gears a bit and talk about active transport.